Welcome back to another episode of War in the Sea Pacific Theater Mod. Uh, we're on part 130. These are going quick. It's almost like I'm missing numbers or something because I make so many videos. But uh, yeah, it just seems like we broke 100 not a week ago and now we're already 30 episodes past 100. So one of the things that one of the uh, commenters said in the videos we talked about hoping that they add more ships into the game so i figured i'd i'd do a little side video here um to explain it and maybe maybe if you don't have the game and you want to know more about it you have to understand that the game is when you purchase it it doesn't come like this you're not you don't buy this game this mod you get a base game. It's got a blue screen. It, it, the map is different. Um, it's, it's a totally different thing. So you have to understand that. And to get to play War in the Pacific, the the Rising Sun, which you get to in this mod, you get to play either the U.S. side or the Japanese side. Um, so this is this is a mod. To the base game and in this mod that and there are mods that are different there are there are mods that are more specific that you can tweak and you can change things to it um, it gets more complicated than my computer brain can handle because my computer brain writes with a pencil but the uh, this mod that I have that someone online helped me with uh, I commented on another channel and I've mentioned them in earlier videos I think in the start of the series probably episode part six but um, if you go to campaign you see here this is what the mod gives you in this in this uh, met ways to play the game so there's Operation Watchtower, which is kind of the base game. Then you have a, a Battle of Guadalcanal. Then you have War in the Pacific. Then you have The Rising Sun. Then you have Abdicom. And with these five game modes in this mod, uh, we are playing War in the Pacific. Um, so we use Midway as our forward base, defend the last bastions against the Japanese onslaught in Southeast Asia, and liberate the Dutch East Indies, Solomon, Singapore, and the Philippines. It's funny how it says Singapore, but I don't think Singapore is one that we need, but who knows. Operation Watchtower, you control the Allies, Solomon Islands, airfield, uh, build an airfield in Guadalcanal and pr prevent any further Japanese expansion to the south. Um, so just on this screen here, you see Guadalcanal's down here. So this first Operation Watchtower covers probably this much of the map. Just this down here. Um, Battle of Guadalcanal is you're doing the same thing down here, but you are on the Japanese side. Uh, the Rising Sun... So you're basically, you're doing the same thing that War in the Pacific did, but you're playing on the Japanese side. So it would be this War in the Pacific mode, but you're playing as the Japanese, which I probably may not do because I'm an American and that's just how I play. Um, Abdicom, you control the allies, allies in the Dutch East Indies and defend all enemy troops from Java. So basically it's if I get rid of this screen, uh, that didn't do much. But um, so, if you look at the map underneath this uh, screen here, you'll see from maybe th this game mode is like this part of the map from Singapore, Malaya, down here, Java, and you play this formation on the map so there's one part of one map for one mode another map for the for the base game over here 
Uh, and then you have the Pacific, which gives it all. But the problem with that is, which I wish, wish the game did, is that not all ships are included. So I'm playing the entire arena, if you will. Uh, but if you go to the museum, and this is a mode where you can look at all the ships, and in the base game, not all these ships are there. You don't get them all. So if we scroll through, it will scroll through by country, type of ship, and if we just go, here's a quick example, okay? Um, let's look at carriers, okay? So we start with the Americans and work our way through the countries with all the carriers that are available in this mod. So we have the Lexington, Saratoga, we have three of the Yorktown class carriers, which are Yorktown Enterprise Hornet. And then we go to the Wasp, which is a single. Then we have the Essex, which we just induced into the game recently. Ten of those of various names and everything. It's like we changed the Wasp with the Wasp to the older version. Yeah, that's a good thing, right? What about uh, Yorktown? Uh, Yorktown Hornet. Wasp, you know, we probably might do that. So, um, 10 of those. And then you have later in the game Essex Longbow class, which seven of these exist. And what happens is you click this button here and it changes to the aircraft carrier or the ship that you wanted to look at. That's why it's a museum, so you get to look at all the ships. You still look in what the specs are in these as well. What other aircraft carriers? We have the Essex carrier. Let's see what the difference is here. If we click. A little bit different. It's got these tall stanchions. Looks a little smaller. This is where we have 40 Corsairs, Helldivers, and Avengers. So there's a big difference. Um, in some of these ships. So, and then we go into Akagi, where we get close up and personal with what these ships look like, so you can reference them. The Akagi, which looks very similar, but there's some changes. The Kaga, which is again, these are all, they're big carriers, okay? Uh, one of these. So are you? So it looks a lot smaller, doesn't it? From the last picture. But it's cool how they have the funnels facing down and, and that kind of thing. Uh, what else we got? Here are you. Look a little bit bigger. A little bit different. Shokaku, so he's a big, bigger boy. Tayo, looks more American, more modern, except for the funnels curved. See that? Get the uh, Emperor's seal here. Um, Onuru, which is again, uh, some of these, the, to get closer, it seems like they're, you know, I, just, just the, the fact that these ships existed are pretty awesome, if you ask me. So you can go through and look at these ships, um, but if we go to the, Australians, or if we go to the British, there are no ships for them. Um, let's look at battleships, for example. Or actually, yeah, let's look at battleships. I'm going to put on all. Tennessee, 
go through the Americans, British, Renown, Repulse, right? And then we go back. So none of the other countries have uh, standard battleships. If we go over to main battleships, then you get into some more different stuff here. Iowa class. Montana, Illinois, Kearsarge, it's got like 10 aircraft I think, 14 Hellcats, right, little carrier top, interesting ship. Let me go to the British, Queen Elizabeth. King George, and then in the Japanese ships. Okay, so so that's basically um, showing you that not every ship. Like I know in in the Abdicom Dutch East Indies campaign, you play with uh, some very different ships mostly British uh, the American aircraft carriers are not represented in this game mode um, maybe the Langley is for example uh, which you can't get in the Pacific theater mode so yeah that, that's the thing I just wanted to bring up um, I'm going to uh, end this video here but a few more things we can talk about somebody asked is that's not what I want to do that's doing a custom mod, mod bot, battle um, see options okay in options this is how you establish the game and you know, everybody can do it however they like, and um, there are just certain things, and I've, I've talk, talked about it during the playthroughs in my videos, and you've heard me say these things a hundred times about like ship collisions, and so like if the AI wants to be stupid and, and have their ships collide, I'd rather mine not, so my player collisions are off. Uh, dud bombs. <clears throat> I don't believe in dud bombs, although it did happen. Dud torpedoes, it's totally unfair because you have a submarine against maybe a fleet of 10. You only have a certain number of torpedoes and you could shoot six torpedoes and one will explode. The, the ratio, I know that's accurate. Um, if you play a British submarine, your torpedoes work. If you play an American submarine, I know the torpedoes were bad, the Mark 14s were extremely bad, and untested and all sorts of corruption involved in that whole thing, but you're playing a game. And what fun is there to have submarines that I think after 43 they fixed the problem, uh, but in this game it doesn't happen. So if you have that dud torpedo on, you can expect one in four at least to be done, or no. Uh, three and four to be duds um, or whatever the, f the factor is I don't like that part of the game so I turn my torpedoes off duds um, a lot of this other stuff pause combat yeah I pause because I like to think and that's why I have mine set up there auto classify ships is really not that big of a deal because it doesn't happen all the time you still have to go through and select what ships uh, you know, identify the ships, you know, the little uh, microscope look or uh, magnifying glass looking thing icon. Um, enemy ships friendly fire. I'm going to say don't let them do that because that's not fair. That's totally the ships destroying each other. Now, if they collide, that's a different thing. I don't think ships in any of these games should collide the AI should automatically avoid other friendly ships at least 
If they want to crash into an enemy ship, that's different. But you're never going to get that close to do that, so I, I don't see how that would be a thing. Um, measurements. Yeah, you can use metric measurements if you want. I'm an American, so we don't use metric uh, for mainly reasons. Um, so the balance, there are certain modes of this game that if you change it to combat difficulty, if you say very easy, it becomes silly. If, um, if you're starting out and you want to have fun, I just use balanced. But as you know, we've talked about AI before. Uh, the AI AAA fire against my airplanes is very accurate, and my AAA against their fire is not. That's not balanced, in my opinion. And I don't know what it was actually in real life uh, during World War II, but I imagine maybe more aircraft were shot down on both sides. Uh, I don't know. Some movies you see, they try to make it out to be that uh, it was the fighters that took out the incoming planes and things like that. And there may be some of that, but I don't know what the balance is between AAA fire and, and defending the fighters getting the attacking force. I, I don't know what the, the balance is. I'm sure someone, someone knows, someone can say. But uh, for me, I don't think it's balanced, but we'll take it. We're playing in a combat difficulty balanced mode. Campaign difficulty as well. Um, I'm just sticking with the basic, the way it was loaded. I didn't change anything. Um, who knows, maybe that will be something that will happen later, but this is a long enough playthrough, so we might put this specific theater to rest uh, when we get to the end and play a different model uh, mode. Uh, sonar range. Sure, okay. The sonar in this game, like submarines, I played in other mods where the sonar made sense. This one it really doesn't. I, I don't know what the difference is. Maybe it's because I have it at four range. Um, it doesn't tell you how what that distance is really anyway. It does when you look at the ship itself and it tells you how long the radar range is in miles. Um, I think it's miles, maybe it's meters, who knows. But um, I just decided to extend it. Maybe that's why my radar stinks in this game. Maybe that's why. Because I know if you change some of these things in the mod says you should play in a, in a certain level of accuracy or difficulty, um, it can mess with the game itself. So maybe that would be a reason why. We go over here and we go to controls. Um, these are all the basic default controls. I didn't change anything. I'm playing with a, on my PC with a mouse and keyboard and um, I know the basic controls um, that you see here. Then some they have icons like in the in the game mode over here where my mouse is. You have these, um, <coughs> you know, uh, target mode. So, you know, I go down and click the target mode button. I should probably be hitting T or whatever. But you see that there are some uh, qu quite a few keys that you can know on your keyboard if you want to play that way. Um, like I just looked and I didn't know that that was underwater most too. But So I'm just kind of scrolling through these so you can see that there are some, some basic uh, keys for all the different controls. Ooh, look, kamikaze. I wonder when that comes into play. Okay, so th those are some of the, the controls that the game has set up. On the video, this is how you would apply so that your viewing is the best that you'd like it to be. Um, there are some tricks that you gotta, I, again, this is all stuff I'm not good at, so I just kinda go with whatever came up and said, okay, that's, that's enough. 
And then I said, eh, maybe if I take off underwater particles, it would look better and take off trees to limit the amount of graphics that show up on the, on the screen, you know, that kind of thing. Um, but yeah, that's a video settings. So like this game has multiple settings for your graphics and mine are at the highest. I don't know if that's the right way or wrong way. I don't even know what anti-lacing is. So again, I'm not a, I don't expect people to think I'm a smart computer guy because I'm not. I built my own computer, but yeah, that was reaching for me. Um, audio. If you guys have any questions and you want me to lower the music volume or combat volume or message volume or, or whatever, you let me know. And maybe I'll go in and do that. So that's basic controls of the, the game itself. Um, I've given you a little overview of, of what's involved. Um, there are training things that you can do in here. Little, small, how does this game work? It's in the base game as well. I don't know if it goes this in depth, but there's just some basic stuff and it walks you through it. It's pretty good. Um, single battles again I've never done any of these but I think uh, they're supposed to be semi accurate how many of these we got we got 44 of these things okay I haven't played any of them maybe that's something that I'll think about doing for another series and play each one of these guys and see how really bad I do um, the Atlantic is another game mode that is coming out, but it hasn't come out. It's not in this mode, but it will. It there is an Atlantic mode coming. Uh, Indian Ocean. Again, there is an Indian Ocean mod coming. Mediterranean as well. These are all perspective. I think they're already out now. Gives you an idea how old this this uh, mod is. Uh, what else we got? And there we are at the Pacific. So that that's some of the things. That, and uh, I know we're just on this one screen, but um, hmm. I'll, I I promise as soon as I upload this, I'll upload another video, and uh, we'll see you then. Okay. Thanks for watching.